Hello, hello. All right. We're going to do a whole bunch of flip cup paint pour techniques with fluid acrylics, a whole bunch of colors, a whole bunch of little tips and tricks on flip cup technique. Janice, how are you? All is well. Oh, good, good. I see my cardi asked. <laughs> pretty good here. We're doing pretty good. Our snow is all gone, and it's actually a beautiful, beautiful, sunny, sunny, beautiful day here. Uh, I think we're going to open up all the windows. I love it when in the, like, later winter, you know, before spring, when you get a really nice sunny day, and you can just open up all the windows and kind of air out your house. Because it was such the cold and the snow, we've had it all closed in to keep it warm. So I think it'd be a nice day to kind of air out the house here in a little bit. So what we have today to start is we're going to start with a two six by six inch tiles. Then I'm going to do two different flip cups and I'm going to show a couple of different tips and tricks. And then we've got some canvases of different sizes. And so we're going to go back and forth. So I'll show you here in just a minute. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the same exact colors, but kind of like um, so what I do is I have them here that I'm going to really nicely layer them just carefully in and then do a flip cup. This um, red and this blue in the bottle and the cup both have silicone. So for this one, we're going to do from a bottle. And so I'm going to show you the difference between doing a bottle where you're going to squeeze and then if the paint is going to go, you know, like if you do it in just a cup, see, watch just a second. Let me explain myself. I'm not explaining this very well. If I pour just a, down the side very carefully, you're going to get more of layers in the cup. I'm going to show you the difference between doing a flip cup. Certain colors you want, maybe they don't work well together or you don't want them to muddy and mix. You're going to want to do it where you just layer it down the, the um, cup. But maybe if I'm going to show you the difference between if we just squeeze them in there and we don't worry about like layers, we get them kind of mixed in there. I'm going to show you the difference there. Okay, we're oh, right there. So we have some, we had some turquoise, some red, some yellow ochre. So we have the same exact colors where we can just care. And you can do it. You could do it out of the squeeze bottles. I could have. But you have to take off the lids and very carefully layer them through. So we've got the same colors there, right? Oh, I guess we need to get this blue in this one. And that's just an ultramarine blue. We have an orange. So I'm going to show you how these colors are really going to mix on the one here where we're putting it in with the bottle. We're going to get different shades because we're going to get kind of mixture. Whereas this one, we're getting layers. We're going to do a just regular old flip cup. I think we'll put a little more of that turquoise in there. So these are just six inch tiles. Rochelle, hello, welcome. Almost out of this turquoise in this bottle. So I'm pressing it, I'm squeezing that bottle pretty good to really make this effect where it's going all through. Same colors, we're gonna get a totally different look. We almost have enough. A little bit more of that yellow ochre. And these are leftover from a pour I did yesterday that turned out beautiful, these colors. All right, now we have plenty of paint. I'm gonna show you the difference that makes. And it totally both are beautiful looks. Sometimes you might be looking for the little bit more, um, this one's going to have definite color definition. This one's going to be a little bit subtler, kind of mixed together. 
I'll go ahead and flip both of those. Okay, so when I do a flip cup, you can lift it straight up. If you lift it straight up, you're going to get drips down in your design. Sometimes maybe you want that. Or you can flip it to the side. There's now, you, there you can flip and drag it through. There's all kinds of different techniques here. So I'm just going to flip it and just let it kind of just all the rest of it come out here. So you notice that this, we've got the colors have kind of muddled together and stuff, which is a beautiful look if that's what you're going for. Now you can torch it at this moment or you can torch it after you've stretched it all out. Now this one is going to get a little bit different colors because you layered them in real carefully. You didn't, um, like I squeezed on the one on the right, I squeezed the bottles real fast. Now I'm just letting them, the rest come out, the last little bit come out while I talk. So see how we got quite a difference. We got a lot more cells, little tiny cells in this one, because when I squeezed those bottles through, it kind of did a mixture and it's all about consistency and surface tension and stuff with that paint. So, all right, now I'm just going to go ahead and stretch this out and bring it to all the edges and then we'll torch it. But see how we did the same exact colors, but it really made a difference how you're layering it in that cup. So that's always something to keep in mind with doing a flip cup. If it's colors like that are not going to really, you know, a lot of people, this these colors will mix, you know, pretty poorly you might want to do it with this side where you did it um layering it in there but if you want your colors to kind of mix together a little bit if you're looking for that look then you're going to want to do it more you know really just squeezing those bottles in so that's the first kind of tips and <clears throat> excuse me that's the first thing with flip cups. And then I'll show you a couple more little tips and tricks. And we're going to do some more color combinations. And, and I'm going to get some canvases out here in just a moment. And we'll do some canvases. So all I'm doing here is just getting it all the way to the edge. Each of the edges. And then you can also do, you know, things like having negative space. See, I could have probably had a little bit more paint in my, um, I'm losing a lot of my cell definition. So what I could have done there, but I torch it and I'll get some more new cells pop up. But see, I'm going to show you real quick what I think I should do right here. I would actually probably here just bring in some of these colors so I don't have to stretch too carefully. Fill in some of these holes and then stretch the rest of the way so I don't lose the rest of themselves. You can always do that and you can stretch that right off the edge so it doesn't look. Yeah, two totally different looks with the same paint. And it's, so it just depends on how you layer it in your cup. If you just carefully layer it down the side, or if you really just mix it in there. So let me wipe my hand and then I'll give that a little bit of a torch. We'll see what pops up there. And we just have a regular old kitchen chef's torch. Same colors had silicone in each of them. And then I'll show you in just a moment. If you um, do a flip cup and you, you torch. So this was torching after I have tilted it all. After I have stretched it all out. Now we're going to do a flip cup and I'm going to torch it right away. I'm going to show you the difference there. If you're going for bigger cells, 
you're going to want to torch it right after you flip it before you stretch it. If you're going for smaller cells, you're going to torch it now. Thank you. So, all right. So that's the difference there. Let me go ahead and now I'm going to show you on a canvas real quick. So I have a six by six inch again, but it's a gallery wrapped canvas, gallery wrapped. Uh, and I'm one of those real nice thick ones. I love this size. It's a super fun. So what we're going to do is we're going to do another flip cup, different colors, but we're going to torch this. Um, but we're going to do the flip cup and we're going to torch it right away. I'm going to show you the difference there. So I'm going to take some blues. Some of this vivid violet, uh, navy blue, some uh, plum, craft smart plum. The navy is apple barrel. I mix all kinds of brands. The black, so the black, you don't want it to overtake. So just a little bit of that black. And then. Don't have much left, a little bit of gray. Don't have much. And I think I'll put a little bit more violet in. If you guys have any questions, let me know. So this has got a pretty thick side. So this six by six inch canvas, I have a, let me look. Uh, this is a three ounce cup. All right. Let me get a couple of these. Let's put a little bit of this blush pink as well. Now we've really got that cup full. So the navy and the, the when I used the cup, this uh, had silicone. Those are the two that had silicone. You're just going to take this and literally just flip this literally on the canvas. Flip cups are super, super easy. And they're super fun to play around with different color combinations. As soon as you get your consistency right, you'll you'll be able to get it. So I'm going to, again, just flip it. But um, And we can torch right away is what we're going to do. I'm just trying to get those little bits out. All right. And this time we're going to torch and then stretch. And that will give you bigger cells. Already trying to get right down the sides. Okay, let me get my edges, make sure I have all the edges, all the corners. The corners are always tricky. Might need to help it a little. We can torch it again, too. But that's how, if you're going to want to get bigger cells, torch first and then tilt and stretch those out. And we got a variety of cells. We got some little ones. We got some big ones. We've got quite the, um, I would say, kind of galaxy colors going here. Wiping my hands clean. You know, I don't think I am going to torch it. I could torch it again, but we would just get a whole more bunch of cells. But I'm going to go ahead and leave it because we're getting plenty popping up through. That navy blue had a lot of that silicone. Let me... There we go. Thank you. Oh, the cup is beautiful. You guys. So that is a flip cup. And then that's, you know, if you torch before you tilt. So there's all kinds of little subtle things that you can do that can totally change the whole look. It, the way the layering the paint and we'll get into a lesson you know like probably in 
six or so weeks where we talk about different opaque and translucent paints and the different densities of paints. And that's a whole nother little bit more advanced how you layer the paints um, being the certain colors are denser than others and such. But these are just kind of some basic techniques. So you can torch before you tilt, get some bigger cells come in. Cells are just the little thing, all these little round things in fluid acrylics, paint pouring. That's what those are called as cells. So this is the um, torching before you tilt. And then the other two just subtle just differences is just pouring it down the side and really layering that cup. Like you would layer it if you were doing a ring pour or a tree ring pour. Or if you do more like a dirty cup where you just a different look. And that's like the first two I did. So there's just subtle little things that you can change, you can do that give you different looks. So, all right. So this one, kind of a galaxy look going on. Loving that. Loving those big cells. But we also have some nice, beautiful, um, it's hard with the ring light uh beautiful cells coming up through so we have a variety that's what's really nice about this one we got some small cells we got some big cells so i'll set that one aside all right i have another so we're gonna do this one one more up this one i'm going to show you a flip cup and a little bit of a technique after you flip it what you can do with this kind of dragging some paint through to kind of change the look up a totally different way. And then I have an eight by 10 that we're going to do what's called a flip and drag. And then I have a larger canvas, a 16 by 20, that I'm going to show you how I can do uh, like a quadruple flip cup on a larger canvas. So a whole bunch of different subtle differences to create just different looks. So all right, so now we have another of the six by six inch gallery wrapped canvases. So you need to make sure you get those nice deep sides, beautiful sides if you let it drip down real beautifully. So we're gonna go with um, some of this blue again. We might as well just use that up. So for this one, after I flip the cup, I'm going to show how you can kind of drag them through and give kind of a subtle different look. Let's see. Let's go with, uh, I'm trying to decide what colors here. This is a beautiful um, bluegrass green, and I believe it's from Deco Art. I don't always label my bottles, but thankfully I have labeled that one. Some more of that plum. Let's go to some of this Diva Pink. This is a bright pink from um, Apple Barrel. And some more that navy. And then we have, um, this one is Scuba. Um, I believe it's Apple Barrel. And I'm going to throw just a little bit more of that bluegrass green. So, all right. So, this one. Oh, Whitney, I believe you are from Mike's community. Welcome, welcome. Well, thank you. Thank you for stopping by. Yeah, I believe um, you guys are in the um, kind of the coin community. You guys all watch coin channels and such. So that's cool. Uh, yeah, my husband is Mike, Mike the Greek. I, I'm Megan, by the way. People call me Megan or they call me Whimsy or whatever. So what we're doing today is, have you ever um, seen paint pouring? This is paint pouring with fluid acrylics. Are you familiar with paint pouring at all? It's become um, quite popular in the last few years. I have been doing it since December 2013, uh, January 2014. So quite a few years I've been doing it. So uh, I like to share and just show everybody some of the things 
uh, I've learned after, you know, years of trial and error. So what we're going to do now is take it and just flip it. Okay, so now, if you've noticed all of them, I've just flipped them over and I've left that, you know, alone. Now you can do like flip and kind of drag your cup back through. So I'm not, I'm going to flip it and then you're going to watch, I'm going to let ribbons of the paint kind of drag through. So there's just all kinds of little subtle differences that'll create total subtle little changes. Oh, all right. Nice to meet you. Oh, you're not familiar. Okay. There's so many different techniques. I've got um, many videos on different techniques, but today we're doing all kinds of different flip cups is what this one's called. So see, I'm going to take and I'm going to kind of just let, and it kind of breaks up that design. And so that's, that's another way you can, so many little differences, little subtle things that you can do to kind of change up the look. Just trying to not waste any paint, get the last little bit out. So now we're just going to, um, now I could torch, but I'm gonna go ahead and just stretch out what we already have here and then I'll torch afterwards. So I'm just dragging to the edge, not really dragging, um, stretching it kind of to the edge, tilting it to the edge, back to the center slightly, to the next edge, back to the center slightly, to the next edge. And then I wanna stretch it back to the center and kind of work on my sides. And then I'll wipe off my hands and give that a torch. So what I have here is acrylic paint, acrylic paint. And uh, it's mixed with Floetrol. All right. Well, thank you for stopping by to check it out. I go live every Wednesday at 2 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. And then I put out little videos here and there. I've been kind of experimenting with the shorts and so I have all kinds of different tutorial videos. Sometimes they're just set to music. Sometimes that I um, speak and kind of guide along. All kinds of different variety of different videos on paint pouring. So um, there's cells popping up as we speak. It's kind of just that um, because I've put silicone in here. And so that's what creates what we call cells. And then if you take a torch, you may pop any bubbles that may be there. And then you're also going to create, um, kind of change the surface tension. And it'll move that silicone up through creating sometimes, not always, but sometimes, you know, more cells. And you don't want to burn the surface. You're just kind of warming up the surface. So... Hey, Mr. Doughboy. Oh, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Janice, thank you, Whitney. Uh, I'll throw a cup of paint at Mike. You're really wanting me to throw a cup of paint or something like that. That's what you've been voting for. <laughs> we'll have to wait till it's a little bit nicer outside and we can set up something outside. That's way too messy inside. <laughs> so, all right, let me give you a little bit I'm going to just a moment, turn that off, give you a little bit better. Mike, I turned off the um, ring light. What, how is the lighting with it off? Is it better than you don't see the reflection of it through here? I might have enough lights without it. Hey, Robert, how are you doing? How's the family? So this is that pink is diva pink and it dries fluorescent. Sometimes with fluid acrylics, you'll run across some colors that dry and they dry kind of dark. No, this one dries super, super like bright, just like it is. So if you notice, there's more and more and more cells popping up. It's just so cool. It, um, for the next oh, half hour or so, more might even pop up. But you always wanna make sure that your canvas is super level so it doesn't move too much. So, all right going to set this one aside. 
just waiting on the snow. Yeah, we just had snow uh, last week. We had an amazing amount of snow for our area. We never get that much snow. So what I have today is I have an eight by 10 inch uh, canvas that's a repour. This was a canvas I did a while back and uh, I'm just not super happy with the way it turned out. So we're, I'm actually gonna redo this one is what this one is gonna be. So I'm going to do kind of similar technique as what I did here, and it's a flip and drag. So with a flip and drag, what you're going to want to do is um, I'm going to put down a base coat of white, and it's mixed up just like my other paints with Floetrol. And I can tell I did not shake this bottle well enough, but that's okay. <laughs> So you're just going to want to get that spread about. Oh, you're down in Texas. Yes, yes, you definitely did. Um, I have family down. I actually have family down towards the border and they were uh, inundated with not so much the snow, but the really cold weather. So I can imagine, I'm glad you guys are getting some relief. Uh, I think it's now pretty hot down in Texas, isn't it now? Now, isn't it like super hot, like a complete change? So crazy, crazy weather. Um, we usually up here in Washington, um, every few years we'll get kind of the bigger snowstorm. But uh, we usually don't get like a ton of and we ended up with, I believe, about 20 inches. So that's a good amount for our area. But it was it was nice. It happened to come on a you know longer holiday weekend. And um, so uh, luckily not too many people had to be on the road and stuff. So it really was okay. So we've got our base coat of white down. Yeah, you're on a heat wave now. <laughs> Mr. Doughboy, <laughs> I bet you that when that glitter, it, that glitter gets everywhere, doesn't it? Uh, let's just show that one. That's so weird that that was, that comment was held. Sorry, trying to work the computer with my gloves isn't the easiest. Okay, so we got a base coat here. I do see quite a few because I shook that bottle right before. So I am going to give it a little bit of a, uh, I see quite a few bubbles. So I'm just giving it a quick little bit. So now I'm going to do a flip and drag through. So I don't want, um, I just want a smaller cup. I don't need a ton. So we're going to get kind of some similar colors. We're going to get some of that blue. We don't need a ton, though. Just a little bit. Oh, you're not a troublemaker. It's all right. So we're just getting a little bit of each there. Some of that navy, some of that plum, a uh, blush pink. I think I might um, even put a little bit lighter pink. I believe that is... Uh, I'm trying to remember all the colors. It's an apple barrel color. Pink parfait or something. I cannot remember. <laughs> but what we're going to do is we're going to do flip this right. So for a flip and drag, you can do it straight across. You can do it diagonal. You can just all kinds of um, different ways. So notice I'm pouring over a canvas that I had already poured on before. I had not varnished it. It had been um, dry for several months. So it's okay. I can just pour right on top of it. I didn't have to gesso it. I didn't have to do anything to prepare it. And I just pour right on top of it. And I haven't had any problems with that. Now, if I had varnished the canvas, you wouldn't be able to just pour right on top of that. Oh, all right. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I've been kind of tending to use a lot more pink. I, I go back and forth for a while. I was using way too much purple. Now I've been noticing I'm grabbing the pink. So I go in stages where I grab certain colors, you know, I go. So now I've, I've flipped this over. 
I'm going to just kind of drag it across while lightly feathering it up. So that would be what the flip and drag method. Kind of slowly picking it up as you're feathering across the canvas. I'm actually going to kind of pull some of this just to kind of even it out. So if you do it right, you can just very lightly let a little, little, little. So you get kind of some lacing of that white. It pulls some of that white up over it. So now I'm going to just kind of stretch that out. Then I'm going to blow out the edges and I'll show you how I do that. Just stretching those out. Going to go kind of around in some circles. Stretching those cells out. And then we're going to torch it again here in just a moment. Kind of see what composition you like best, pulling it down in the whatever direction you kind of think looks. I'm going to kind of stay about right there. So that would be what you call flip a flip cup, but it's a flip and drag. And so then in the art world or whatever, you call this like negative space. Now you have negative space. You have your cells. And you, this white, kind of this white across the top is called lacing. I'm going to give it a little bit of a torch. It's really not going to do much. And then... What I like to do sometimes is, so I have aquarium tubing. I'll take some aquarium tubing. This one, I'm just going to subtly do it. Sometimes I really will blow and pull out those edges really like quite a bit, feather them out. This one, I'm going to really kind of subtly do it. And why do I do that? I kind of just, it's a personal preference. You don't have to. It just kind of gives uh, a little bit of a more organic edge. <laughs> hey, H7, how are you doing? And then you can also kind of just blow to stretch out cells you already have, all kinds of stuff. So, all right. So that would be what the flip and drag. And yeah, you get kind of a little bit more of a delicate look there. And that's, and it's, it really matters with if you, um, when you do a flip and drag, and if you drag it across and you just lift up while you're dragging, you're not going to get quite such a subtle look. I put kind of a heavier base coat of my white down. And then when I drug it through my white, I literally just feathered it up. And then that just takes a little bit of practice, learning how to just, you know, really lightly feather it up and let just little bits getting out. So, um, yeah, that's the flip and drag. Now, let me get a couple of these paints moved out of our way because I'm going to get now out a 16 by 20 canvas. So that's going to take up a lot more room here. And I'm going to show a... Um, quadruple how to do flip cups on a bigger canvas and how to do them um with uh multiple flip cups on one canvas so let me just make myself some room get these out of the way oh yes i've been practicing all kinds of different things and then i you know want to just pass along any tips and tricks i've learned and i've been trying to refine my video videography trying to refine my just every little bit i'm trying to just make it a better experience for all so all right give you a better 
there is a flip and drag with negative space. All right, so now I'm gonna get a couple of cups. And we're gonna get a 16 by 20 inch canvas. Yeah, I'm trying to go live every Wednesday. So um, Wednesday at two o'clock for next, oh, six, seven, eight weeks. I'm not sure how long. It's gonna be kind of lessons. So today we we're talking about flip cups. Next week, we're going to talk about dirty pours. And then the following week, I think we're going to do swipes. So, okay, we have a 16 by 20 inch canvas now. Let me get a little bit more room here to really move around. So what we're going to do for this I'm going to use a couple of these cups just to use them up. We're going to use that one. And we're going to use this one. And we're going to get, you know what, we'll do, yeah, we'll do a quadruple flip cup. We'll do four flip cups. We'll fill those up. So, oh, got to head out. Nice to meet you. All right. I'll, hopefully we will see you back again next week. Thanks for stopping by. Nice to meet you. Reminded you of Caterpillar? Uh, yeah, uh, I've had a few of those flip and drags that are kind of a caterpillar or a dragon. I've had a few that are kind of different. So now we've got the four cups. Uh, these are um, five ounce cups and these are three ounce cups. No biggie. We have a 16 by 20 inch canvas. We're just going to randomly get some paint in here and we're going to go with some blues and some kind of neutral tones. I'm just kind of randomly. So this canvas, we need a lot of paint for 16 by 20. And then some teals would be nice. And so I just keep them in my um, bottles all mixed up. And we went through like consistency. I'm dripping all over this canvas today. That's all right. Oh, this bottle is not wanting to work. Okay. All right. And then we have a little bit lighter color of a teal. This one's called Cascade. This is a gorgeous, just lighter teal. So we're going to flip these and I'm going to show you how you can flip on a larger canvas. Let me wipe my hand real quick. I got that teal all over. All right. Let's see how much we got. We need quite a bit more paint here. We're just going to pour it right out of the bottle. All right, get some of that, some of these blues. And a little more of that tan. And then we're going to use this tan as kind of a base around our flip cups here. All right, and I have a little bit darker uh, burnt umber. A little bit darker brown as well. Well, so we're going with some blues and some neutrals. And all right, that should be pretty good there. Let me make myself some room. Put these ones right there. I think I'll put is this navy and that might be the only one with silicone actually. Okay, so what I do 
to do a flip cup with multiple cups, like on a larger canvas like this, what I'm going to do is I take a spatula. I just get a spatula from the Dollar Tree. Okay, now I've decided I have plenty. <laughs> so I've got a spatula from the Dollar Tree. You can flip your cup right on that spatula and then just slide it onto your canvas. So I think I'll do this one kind of up here, this one over here. So that's how you can do a larger canvas, do flip cups. It's a little bit easier on a larger canvas to do multiple flip cups because if you try to do just like one large cup, by the time you've tilted that all around, you've lost a lot of your definition of your cells. So what I like to do is just do multiple cups on a larger canvas. So now what I would like to do is I'm going to use this and I'm going to help it out in the corners here. And I'm going to go to all the corners with a, this um, lighter, it's pebble is what it is. It's um, deco art pebble. And I know this, yeah, you guys can see it pretty good. It's a 16 by 20. It's a pretty large canvas for the, the camera position was more for those smaller ones. So... So how is everybody doing? What's everybody doing today? Oh, that's why we didn't want to come out. I knew I could feel that. Rody. So we're just getting a little bit of this brown kind of in between these flip cups before I flip them over. And then this is actually the last one for today. All right, you can see that one. Okay, good. I wasn't sure. So you can now, I'm pretty messy if you guys can't tell. I just use my hands and I'll just kind of help this out to the corner. That's, I'm about all about the quickest, most efficient way. Use your fingers, get messy. Now we're going to start flipping those. And I'm just going to flip them. You could do the flip and drag. You could do the flip them and then drag them kind of through. You could do all that. But I'm just going to flip them. So I'm going to flip that one kind of that direction. Then set it there. Flip that one. So I'm going to set that one there. Flip that one. So we can get all the paint out. We'll set that one and we'll knock our torch over. That's all right. Make a little more room. We need some elbow room. Get these cups out of the way. Just getting that last little bit out. That's all we're doing there. You're a little less sedentary today than usual it's beautiful beautiful weather here so might need to go on a walk we i was talking about that here in a little bit we might all right so now we're gonna start Sorry if I got tilted kind of out of your guys's. All right. So just a moment. I'm going to tilt it. I'm going to torch it. Then I'm going to, so this time I just, at this point, what I'll do is I'll just stop and just kind of inspect and take a look. And sometimes you can get out a palette knife and kind of help it along in some of these more solid areas. 
Try not to drip in the middle of your thing. Make sure you're getting, of course, you know, I say it all the time, get those edges, get those edges. You can kind of just help it along. So what you can also do, I'm going to show you what I like to do. So you can just pull out just a little bit of that, just subtly with the palette knife. And I'm wiping my palette knife off each time at the edge. So you can kind of just pull just a little. Kind of easier with some of the smaller palette knives. And you could blow out the edges or you could just kind of go through and play with swiping it a little bit. I do still have some bulb spots, and all I'm doing is just pulling out that brown. Oh, retracting messages. I was paying too much attention to the painting, looked up and retracting those messages. <laughs> I don't know what was said. Just getting a little bit more on the edge that we can pull through. And we're just subtly pulling through. Instant art. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? That almost sounds like a bad thing. <laughs> and you can use like the tip and just kind of swirl out, you know, pull out. You do all kinds of different looks. Whatever you're wanting, you can blow the edge. You can leave it. You don't have to do a darn thing. But I intend to just mess with it and mess with it a little here and there. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's a good thing. All right. Wasn't sure. <laughs> But see how I pulled out like almost like a bird's head there when I when I pulled that one. It almost has an eye and everything. But blue and browns and teals, always a classic color combination. Um, I it it always works well. I like to, you know, especially if you're a newbie, if you're just kind of learning, if you want to mess around with some new techniques. Blues are always great to mess around and learn some new techniques and then add in some browns, add in some teals as you get more comfortable with each technique. That's kind of really honestly a great safe way if you're a newbie, if you're just beginning, just picking a little bit of this tan up off of my table surface and kind of getting it up here on the edges. So um, this is my last one for today. Next week, we'll do dirty pours. And we'll just kind of do the same where I show you a bunch of different ways of doing a dirty pour with negative space, with multiple cups, with just there's different ways of also doing a dirty pour. So um, again, next week will be the same time, uh, Wednesday, uh, Pacific Standard Time, 2 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. So uh, this is the last one for today. Let me know if there's any questions, though, before I get off of here. A dragon side profile. Up, up here? Like, maybe? It's like a fox. It, Oh, okay. Yes. See, it's so fun. It's so fun to see. I kind of see a bear's head here, like a cub, little cub. A bear's head with his little nose. 
it's so fun because everybody sees different stuff and it's so fun to like just kind of everybody's like seeing different things what everybody so super cool oh down here in the blue okay down like down here let me see because everything is also mirrored to you so yeah we all see our own little, all different little things. And it's fun how that kind of evolves and changes, you know, as, as the cells pop up. And so that would be a quadruple flip cup on a 16 by 20 inch canvas. So that is a whole bunch of different ways to do flip cups. I hope I was able to answer any question. Um, flip cup is a awesome awesome beginner easy easy technique and blues are always easy to start with if you're wanting to go with blues i kind of put in some browns and teals yes pictures worth a thousand words a thousand interpretations awesome awesome the dragon profile. Now I have to figure this out. See, I see like a frog here, a cub here, uh, like a face, this whole thing, a face of a, and the bird here. So it's uh, so many different things. So fun. So, all right, guys, do you have any questions for me? Oh, okay, I see the dragon more. Okay, it's funny. If I look at the painting itself, I don't see the dragon as much as if I look up into my laptop. And then on the computer monitor, I was like, oh, the dragon right there. <laughs> it's like I see it way more in the uh, actual, the laptop. So that's funny. So... So, all right, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. And I hope I was able to give you a few tips and tricks or things that you guys maybe hadn't heard of or thought of. Or um, let me know if you think of any questions even after the live stream. You can always message me and ask me any questions also. So I am going to go ahead and get off of here. That was a quick 52 minutes. That just flew by. I guess that's true when you're having fun. So all right, guys. Um, Will this be for sale? Yeah, as long as it dries. I mean, everything usually, of course, dries pretty good. So as long as this one dries fine, yeah, it should be for sale. Um, you know, of course, it takes like three weeks or so. But uh, I've been putting most everything in my Etsy shop. I am going to be um, taking my Etsy shop and switching it into two Etsy shops. Because right now I've been selling uh, mainly like uh, beach inspired art, beach um, jewelry boxes with like abstract beach, uh, beach scapes and ocean scapes and stuff like that. So my current Etsy shop is eventually going to be just beachy kind of stuff. And then uh, I'll have a second shop that'll be just everything else that isn't kind of beachy. So this has been kind of, it's beachy, but not beachy. You know, it, it could go either way, really. But yeah, so in a couple of weeks, this one should definitely be for sale. Uh, message me or let me know if you're interested in it. Uh, pretty much always, my art is pretty much always for sale. So, all right. I thank you, thank you, and appreciate the support always. Check out my Etsy shop. I do have a bunch of stuff on sale because we're trying to clear it out. We have way too much art. So I do have quite a few pieces marked down and for sale, on sale right now. So, all right, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me. I appreciate you guys. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. You guys are all so awesome. Thank you so much. And I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day. And be the change you want to see in the world, guys. All right. Have a good one. Take care.